The cargo unmanned aircraft system is capable of satisfying the U.S. Marine Corps and Joint Services' need for logistic support to dispersed locations. The technical details of this model tilt rotor design are documented in a series of design reports to be listed at the end of this video. The purpose of this video is to illustrate the operational concept and highlight some of the key design features. The scenario will include shipboard operations and mountainous terrain. The pipeline of supplies that arrive in commercial shipping containers need to be packaged for final delivery. At some supply point, the ammunition crates, meals ready to eat, water and other supplies will form mission tailored loads. By placing a divider in the joint modular intermodal container, two independent loads can be formed. When only the container's contents need to be delivered, the standard door may be replaced with a flap door for dumping the container's contents. Four loads are held by two modular containers. The lightweight cargo pod is lifted, placed, and latched onto the tops of these two containers. This entire assembly is then carted onto the fantail. Notice that the aircraft's tail wheel and wingtips prohibit aircraft tip over. The front wheels are also rather far forward, but can be pulled afterward as shown to lighten the load on the tail wheel so that ground crew can lift it onto the cargo pod. The suspension struts are then connected by cables to the cargo pod. Four cargo unmanned aircraft operate simultaneously from the 100 by 100 foot fantail. At 3,000 pounds payload per aircraft, this represents a 12,000 pound total lift capacity. During takeoff, the cargo pod is lifted with its nose up and the wing flaps are deployed. Both actions reduce interference with the lifting rotor. Compared to conventional side-by-side -side tilt rotors, this coaxial configuration avoids the upward fountain of air at the center line with up to a 20% impact on gross lift capacity. Later in this video, a hover configuration with drooping wing panels is shown, which has potential benefits to be traded against operational impacts. After liftoff, the cargo pod envelops the containers. The cargo pod's elevator and attachment points are then trimmed for efficient cruise. Conversion to airplane mode occurs at between 80 and 120 knots, and best high-speed cruise is achieved at 20,000 foot elevation. While this particular design is optimized for a cruise range of 750 nautical miles at 200 knots true airspeed, an iteration of this design could target a different altitude range and airspeed. The first delivery point is a village rooftop. One container is dropped at this site. The remaining delivery points are 1,000 feet higher in elevation. The aircraft heliplanes to the mountain peak and dumps the contents of one side of the remaining container. A short flight later to the other side of the mountain peak and the other side of the container is dumped. Next, the aircraft lands on the side of the mountain while awaiting further operating orders. As shown here, the pivoting tail boom keeps the rotor at the horizon when resting on highly sloped terrain. One final task for this aircraft is to retrograde a stack of empty modular containers. The empty cargo pod sweeps the ground with its tail wheel while being pulled over the stacked containers. As this video indicates, any type of cargo that conforms to the JMIC standard can be transported. Before we show the aircraft folded and stowed inside of a 20-foot container, we will review the key systems of the aircraft. This is a rendering of the computer-aided design solid model of the aircraft's gearbox. The internals of this gearbox, including material selection, gear count, gear size, and placement have been specified. Weight and power capabilities have been derived from this work. This is a rendering of the computer-aided design solid model of the rotor hubs. Material selection and distribution are sufficient for all predicted blade loads and flight conditions. Weight and durability have been derived from this work. This is a rendering of the computer-aided design of the rotor controls. This is a functional model including all joints, shafts, and levers. Actuators are strategically placed in relation to nearby aircraft structure. The complete drive system was subjected to a comprehensive engineering analysis of all operating conditions. Power input is provided by a pair of Rolls-Royce T800 big block turboshaft engines. The primary load carrying structure is a ring of hard points that encircle the gearbox. A second structure that we're calling a backbone is hinged to this primary structure and carries the tail boom loads and the fixed wing loads. 
A conversion actuator shown in red drives a screw jack between these two structures. A dual redundant electric actuator of sufficient power for all conversion flight loads was selected. Retractable landing gear are hinged at the primary structure and tuck inward to wrap around a fuel tank. The suspension struts are connected together by a shaft passing through this primary structure. A tail boom with vertical fin and tail wheel is connected to the backbone. The fuel tank shown in green conforms to all of the surrounding structure and provides boat tail shape behind the gearbox when in an airplane mode of flight. A streamlined skin surrounds the structure. This shape was determined through computational fluid dynamics computer analysis to achieve no flow separation and minimum drag. This skin is connected to the underlying structure and forms the streamlined shape when in airplane mode. Notice the landing gear door that slides forward to cover the wheels. The pair of Rolls-Royce T800 big block engines are enclosed in the cells that provide residual thrust in airplane mode. Infrared suppressors shown in black are bolted onto the T800 tailpipe. The engines are mounted to the hardpoint at the circumference of the gearbox and drive the gearbox through two 90 degree bevel gear stages. Finally, the fixed wing and rotary wing systems are shown. The fixed wing and horizontal tail areas have been sized and their weights are estimated assuming conventional composite buildup techniques. The stabilator is hinged to the top of the vertical fin. Rotor blade design including material selection, composite layup, and manufacturing process have been specified. The blades have been analyzed for all loads and flight conditions. The entire aircraft is transportable within two 20-foot containers and assembled on site. First, the nose cone is mounted. Then, four of the eight blades are connected by one bolt each and folded forward. Next, the tail assembly is mounted. After this, the wing spar passes through the backbone and anchors the wing hinges. The cargo unmanned aircraft is transported on a special pallet with jacks for anchoring the aircraft during transport and lifting the aircraft as shown here so that its front landing gear can be attached. Finally, the infrared suppressor is bolted onto the T-800 tailpipe. After assembly, the cargo unmanned aircraft is manually pushed onto the fantail where it requires minimal footprint and a folded configuration. In preparation for flight, the rotor blades are manually unfolded and bolted in place. The wings are then unfolded and locked into place. The aircraft now awaits its next cargo pod. The technical details of this design are provided in the following government technical reports and conference papers. Thank you for your attention.